बताए राम इन प्रणाम से दिल ऑट स्वीट ऑफ भगवान नियम ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वेलकम यू बैक टू दिस इवनिंग सेशन बाय भगवान क्रेस वी आर नियरिंग कंप्लीशन ऑफ आवर प्रोजेक्ट दैट डजेंट मीन दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी डिसकंटिन्यूड सर्टनली नॉट विल कंटिन्यू इट and i'm also on the job to find out the back numbers 1998 1999 conversations of some of the students so that we'll also pass on transmit to the world of sai devotees which we have taken it up as a matter of sadhana well i made some homework to make presentation this evening this relates to april 2001 as i said the other day these are the months of sanatan sarri telugu version well that was the time around 4:30 in the evening and swami came out of the interview room with a beautiful smile and as if he was quite uh, enthusiastic to convey something special that evening he came close to us and said have you seen them can we say yes he may say why did you see <laughs> because you are not supposed to see everybody that are here suppose if we say no you are sitting here what is the hell you are doing you are right now here what the hell you are doing so it's just an inconvenient question the boys have learnt the art of communication of silence <laughs> well then i said swami i observed because it is risk proof hour <laughs> so swami has whom did you observe swami i saw you calling for an interview a group of boys from africa then baba said yes you are right they are not boys <coughs> they are balavikas gurus oh i see swami very good to know then bhagwan said have you seen one elderly man in the group well having come this far there's no point in hiding anything now i said yes swami i saw him <laughs> then he said you know you know him so now i know him but i haven't met him how do you know he addressed students there in bangalore and he also addressed students uh, here in prashant nilayam so i know him then bhagwan said he is victor kanu k a n u the head of sai center the head of sai school for education and human values a man of excellence and a long standing devotee of bhagwan then bhagwan said that victor kanu you know ah uh, swami what i only performed his marriage i see and then both of them husband and wife have decided to work for swami all the time they will be thinking how best to serve swami that has been their continuous endeavor and a continuous prayer they are managing school very efficiently that's what bhagwan said somehow i said swami all of them are blacks all of them are blacks swami turned his face serious i don't have any distinction of blacks and whites and browns or yellow or pink no distinction all are same to me you understand yes swami i understand but i am telling only those 
that came out of the interview room. And then, Swami, somehow, I have some preferences in respect of complexion. I have not condemned anything. I said, I have some preferences. Then Baba said, because you have preferences, preferences, in respect of skin complexion, you fellows are suffering. You suffer like this because you go, you go by external complexion of the skin. Therefore, all of you are suffering. And then Baba remarked, Know that black and white both are in me. Oh, I see. Both are in you, Swami. Yes, why not, he said. My friends, most of you know that Krishna is described as the one who is blue complexion. Krishna is dark in his complexion. Rama is blue in his complexion. Balarama is fair in his complexion. So all these complexions, all these colors are in the divinity. You would also agree with me when I say that in the sunlight, all the colors are there. Sunlight may appear to be pure white. When you pass it, the beam of white light through the prism of glass, you find all the seven colors. Don't you? Similarly, in Bhagavan, all kinds of colors, complexions are in him. That is the episode and now I pass on to the next episode. A very elderly doctor was coming that way along the veranda. After a long gap of time. And we came to know that he was operated recently. And so he was not coming for darshan. That day he happened to come for darshan. After a gap of time. You follow me please? And you know what Baba said? Are you happy? Doctor, are you happy? Doctor, are you healthy? He said. He has put these two questions. Are you happy? Are you healthy? And I put a question mark. Without being healthy, how can you be happy? So, one must be necessarily happy when one is healthy. So, both are same. Why two? Swami said, why? What's wrong with you? Swami, why did you put these two questions? Are you happy? Are you healthy? Then Bhagavan said, these two are necessary. Some people are healthy, but they are not happy. What far is the health without happiness? Some people are happy outside, but they are not healthy. Their health is gone. So, it's not enough if you are merely happy. It's necessary that you should be healthy. And it's not enough if you are healthy. You should also be happy. That's what Bhagavan said. Then I come to the next episode. Bhagavan said one thing, whatever I give, it's only for my happiness. All gifts of grace are meant for my own happiness. I don't consider as donation or charity because you all belong to me. I feel that you and I are one. I consider your happiness as my happiness. That's what Bhagwan said. It is also interesting to note, particularly when Swami goes on giving to everybody. So interesting. The tireless God, without any fatigue or tiresomeness, 
goes on distributing be the clothes or watches or rings or chains well he knows no rest he is never tired because that hand is always giving and forgiving at this moment swami made a remark boys look here when you want decide to do anything good do it immediately do not delay don't take time do it immediately if anything bad thought comes into your mind don't take to action take some time wait think so for doing good never take time proceed immediately that's what baba said then in a jovial way bhagwan said there are some people who announce on the platform a donation for 1 lakh rupees 100000 announcement 1 lakh donation act of charity but they go home and the wife will say where is the money to give where is the money to give then the solo will have second thoughts <laughs> why 1 lakh 50000 i think enough <laughs> and next morning when that solo comes to collect money 10000 for this time we'll see later so from 100000 the fellow comes down to 1000 why he has taken time to do his good decision to implement his best of the thoughts that's what bhagwan said and i can also share with you another beautiful remark of swami which is very interesting and important to all of us when you give you get very necessary we don't feel like giving because we are afraid that we may lose but the secret is you get if only you give further bhagwan said when you go on giving you will have infinite happiness infinite prosperity plenty therefore you should learn how to give not only that by giving your karma will be reduced your karma those of you who are yet to be exposed to sai literature who are yet to know the details of karmic effects i can give you one example that baba said for information as a sort of uh, explanation in acts of charity while giving your karmic effects will be on the decline they will be reduced simple example this is all from baba books only never think that anil kumar is imagining and interpreting definitely not i will never do it i always tell to my audience in meetings i am not capable of interpreting imagining no living in the midst of living moving loving never failing ever willing god why should i interpret when swami is telling you so what did swami say supposing i am to pay 20000 rupees as income tax what should i do we don't want to pay 20000 tax hard earned money why should i pay tax so what you can do is if you pay some amount for insurance income tax amount will be reduced 
if you pay if you contribute if you donate some money to charitable trust income tax will be reduced so the income tax amount will be reduced what we call income tax rebate or what you call income tax reduction or income tax exemption is possible by these acts of grace similarly when i am to suffer for a long period because of karmic effects i attend bhajans some amount of suffering is reduced i meditate some punishment is reduced i do some seva exemption from capital punishment <laughs> similarly there is nothing great in amassing money nothing great in grabbing money the greatness lies in giving helping others and bhagwan mentioned the story of draupadi and krishna it so happened krishna pretended krishna acted as if he got his finger cut and there started bleeding and draupadi was wearing a new saree that day and there are so many ladies when they noticed bleeding there one lady went to consult a surgeon surgeon for treatment another lady went to bring some bandage another lady went inside to apply some ointment something but draupadi who was there immediately tore her silk saree tore her silk saree and tied it up there as a bandage as an act of gratitude lord krishna later when draupadi was humiliated insulted and disrobed in an open court krishna blessed her with infinite number of sarees when draupadi gave piece of cloth god gave infinite number of clothes later similarly when you give you get that is the message of bhagwan now i pass on to the next episode a boy gave him some slip he wrote some letter there bhagwan read it tore to pieces as usual nicely it is everything is an art in the divine hands then he said you know what he has written how do i know we wanted to know oh i see you know what he has written swami what is he has written bhagwan my mind is full of negative thoughts mind is full of negativity please save me that's what that boy has written is courageous enough frank and free to have written though it is true with most of us this is swami's answer boy understand it is the mind that is responsible for bondage or liberation the negative mind takes you to negative action and negative action bears negative results the mind which is positive will prompt you to take to positive action and positive action gives you positive results therefore never entertain any negative thought in your mind swami what should i do now what should i do now how do you help me cried the boy bhagwan said mind has no form as is the thought so is the mind when the thoughts are good they constitute good mind 
and thoughts are bad, they make a bad mind. Because mind is nothing but bundle of thoughts. That's what Bhagwan said. And now, you boy, you wrote in the letter that all our negative thoughts in my mind. Right. Okay. You know that the thoughts are negative. You are suffering. So when once you know that the thoughts are negative, that made you suffer like this, come on, give them up. Throw them away. Don't entertain such thoughts. Because the negative thoughts are making you suffer. Why should you suffer? Brush them aside. And he gave an example. You are thinking it is a rope. Then once you come to know it is a snake, what do you do? Will you kiss it? You will drop it immediately. Don't you? Similarly, then once you know that the negative thought is making you suffer, drop it immediately. That's what Bhagawan said. Now I move on to next episode. Bhagavan started speaking about a great philosopher. You know him too. Socrates. Socrates. Socrates is known for his philosophy and is also known for his wife, a termagant. A termagant. A wife of nagging type. So he is famous both in the home front and also from his very high level of intellect. Bhagavan started speaking about Socrates. Socrates was always found writing something on paper. At all, the Greece of those days was very famous. The land of Greece gifted with greatest intellectuals of mankind. Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, they are not ordinary people, greatest people with highest intellect. And Swami was speaking about Socrates. A deep thinker always found writing something on paper. His wife was disgusted with this man. Yes, most of the wives are disgusted when they find their husbands very busy, finding no time to spend with them. And I am no exception. <laughs> and so, she said, what is that you write always? Yes, dear, I have some thought. I am noting it on paper. Stop writing, I say, she said. No. I may forget later. So I am writing. She couldn't control her fury and anger. She brought pot full of water, poured on his head, such that the fellow was totally drenched. Clothes are completely wet. The papers are totally wet. Socrates smiled and said, I thought it was thundering Till now, rain also started. <laughs> it is all right. <coughs> and then Socrates said, Look here, dear. I can understand if you are angry with me. I can understand your temper. But you made all the papers wet. All the written papers. How to get all the information? Then the lady started speaking to him. What is it you have written there? You have written all that is present outside. Had you written that what is inside within you, you don't care for the paper. All those things, worldly things, worldly matters, other things you write and forget. But that which is from within, out of your heart, even the papers are lost. You don't need to be worried because they will be imprinted in your mind. 
Then Socrates said, I accept you are also intelligent. I accept. Yes. So Bhagavan said, Boys, teachers, you always try to write on paper. I don't say you should not. But, it's more important to write here. In the mind. It's more important to preserve in your heart than simply write down on papers. And then, we move on to the next episode, which I am sure we carry a message to all of us. My friends, I am not tired to repeat it time and again. Every conversation of Baba is meant for the entire humanity. When Swami stands there and talks to Anil Kumar, it is to give darshan to thousands of people there in the auditorium. Anil Kumar is an excuse, that's all. And if Anil Kumar thinks that Swami is stood there because of his excellence of devotion, he is fool number one. <laughs> God forbid, that should not happen. I may not be a wise man. Thank God that I am not a fool till now. So, every conversation is meant for everybody. It is from that point of view we are sharing this with the whole world. Now, while talking, Swami turned towards the boy and said, When all are listening to me, you fellow, you are thinking something else. This happens to most of us. We are grateful to Swami that He did not tell the same thing to us. Had he started pointing out to everybody, well, I don't think we would be able to stand him. He, because he's a boy, young fellow, Swami looked at him and said, when all are hearing me, you are mentally thinking something different. That is bad, that is bad. You are pretending as if you are hearing me. But I know that you are not hearing me. Why? Where am I? I am in you. I am in you. I know where your concentration is. And then turn to everybody. He narrated in a, a story from the biography of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, a great sage of India, who is known for his devotion to Mother Kali. Those of you who find time should certainly go to Calcutta and see Goddess Kali. Yes, Kali temple. People say it's one of the very important centers, pilgrim centers in India. Of course, I could not go till now. I don't know when Baba would bless me to go around these places. I wish to go to Arunachalam someday. I wish to go to Pondicherry someday. I wish to see Belurmat, where Ramakrishna Paramahansa spent his time someday. Because they are the they're legends. They made the human history great. They made our lives sublime. And we should remain ever grateful to them. Bhagavan mentioned story connected with the life of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Paramahamsa used to talk every day with the group of devotees in the evenings. Swami said, same as now. See the link. Please understand this. Same as of now. Meaning, that's the purpose of incarnation. The purpose of incarnation is to teach the erring humanity, to direct the humanity. And Swami said, one day when Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was talking, 
on spiritual matters. Many people were listening to him in rapt attention. And there is one lady, a very rich lady, who constructed the temple where Paramahamsa was working as a priest. You can understand that lady. Rani Rasamani. R-A-S-A-M-A-N-I. Rani Rasamani. Who financed for the construction of the whole temple there. Such a rich lady. Highly influential. She was also among the audience. Paramansa while speaking suddenly got up. Went straight to her. Slapped her one, two on both the cheeks. Returned and sat on the chair. Started speaking. Everybody felt very bad. Paramahamsa, a devotee, the learned, cannot go like that and slap a lady in public. After some time, Paramahamsa started speaking like this. Look here. When I am speaking about spiritual topics, you are not listening to me. You are mentally absent. You are thinking of your court litigation. You are thinking of your court matter. You are engrossed in your wealth. You should have stayed back at home. You should have slept. You should have rested. Why should you come here? You are physically here and mentally absent. What for all this? Then Rani Rasamani apologized immediately. My Lord, I beg your pardon. This Swami mentioned, therefore, having come, we should pay 100% attention to what all that is said and spoken to us. That's the end of that month episode. Then now, I pass on to the next month. Yes. There are certain gaps left in our previous uh, recordings, those also I carefully noted, which I am trying to fill them up, taking this opportunity. What I am talking to you now, appeared in the September issue of Telugu Sana Sardi, year 2001. Bhagavan started speaking about rules and regulations. See that. Bhagavan said, the lawmaker is a lawbreaker today. The rulers of the land never follow the rules. But look here, I always follow the, follow the rules of the land. I follow the law of the land. I will never transgress the law and the rule of this land. At one time Bhagavan said, God is an actor and the director. Both actor and the director. Usually, director directs and actor acts as per the direction of the director. Is it not? But, Bhagavan, the divine cosmic director, directs and also acts. Why? In directing, he is a master. In acting, he sets an ideal. How best to act? 
we should learn for, from him. So, to demonstrate what an ideal is, how to act, he sets himself as an example. Rama is an actor. Krishna is an actor. But the divinity within is the director. Am I clear? So, Rama acted well so that we may act like him. So that we'll be ideal parents, ideal citizens, ideal administrators. Krishna, the greatest actor, diplomat, administrator, so that we may learn from him the lessons of love, the lessons of peace. How to conduct one's own self in this cosmic drama of life. So, God plays the role of an actor for all of us to emulate and copy. Besides being the director all by himself. That's what Bhagwan said. Therefore, the rules and regulations are like two buns on either side of the river. Without these buns on either side, the water flows in all directions. The water cannot be channeled. The water cannot be put to use for irrigation purposes. So, water flow must be channeled by raising buns on either side. So, rules and regulations Regulate the human life so that it will be systematic and disciplined. Let us see Swami's life. What a disciplined life it is. Can any one of you tell me an instance when Swami cancelled any one of his, any one of the items of his daily routine. No. Be that the day of the visit of President of India. Be that the day of the visit of the Prime Minister of India. Be that the visit of the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Any big man may happen to visit Prashantinaraya. But our Bhagavan we have his own schedule. Darshan, interviews, bhajan, lunch, darshan, interviews, bhajan. That's all. There will never be any break. If VIPs, big people come, he will have extra load of work. On special functions and festivals, he will have extra load of work. Everything with Swami is besides, meaning in addition to. It is nothing like beside, never by the side of. It is not anything to do in the place of that. It is always in addition to. You got my point? So, Swami goes on working. Extra work. Nothing is cut short in his daily routine. That is the best example for discipline. Observance of rules and regulations. Now I move on to the next episode. Swami sat there and somehow he was in a good mood. Hmm. Come on, boys. Chant Veda. Chant Veda. Well, believe me, all the 1500 students started chanting Veda in perfect harmony. That the whole auditorium is full of resonance and echo with the sound of Veda. 
all the gathering felt the vibrations of vedic chanting and then it is most interesting to note that in such as i education institutions right from a child from kindergarten school to the topmost phd boy all of them know veda all can chant you must have noticed there on all occasions they chant veda then our god all of a sudden turn towards that side and ask one primary school boy a hey boy come on that boy came hmm speak for some time that boy started speaking go go but 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 after all the very young fellow can you speak like that if swami asks you to speak now impossible little children and swami was really enjoying hmm go another boy hmm you speak that fellow speak in hindi acha go next other boy spoke in sanskrit and when swami turned towards us 15 boys stood in line queue every fellow wanted to speak swami to are there so many boys enough that's enough i give you another chance but he doesn't want to disappoint them again he made them speak one after one really it's a, a fantastic experience children lining up to speak in front of bhagwan before thousands of audience and then bhagwan slowly walked towards me have you heard their speeches swami i heard them can your students speak like that your university boys can they speak like that i said so i said they cannot how can i say i have to live with them <laughs> if i say they can swami said sit down what do you know so i kept quiet then swami they cannot primary school children can make best speeches not your university boys if i keep quiet boys will feel bad sir you should have supported us there then i said swami why why they speak why we can't speak i want to know then baba said all children are speaking excellently why because they are innocent because of their innocence they have no fear therefore they can speak when a university fellows there is no innocence full of ego because of ego they have fear whether their speech will be successful or total failure so they begin to doubt understand where there is innocence there is divinity swami all right in you have i have to accept it why ego among college students why 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 college students are egoistic why swami said as they grow in age along with muscle power their ego also increases oh swami so what shall we do what shall i do now then swami said the strength of your heart is more important than your muscular power therefore senior boys are egoistic because of their physical strength that is not important then i said swami all right 
if you say that the muscle power of the youth is responsible for ego as simple doubt bhagwan hmm what's your doubt old people are weak they don't have strong muscles does it mean that they have no ego <laughs> we see many old people abba himalayan ego there are some people there working they don't allow us to stand they don't allow us to sit they do because senility what to do when devotee came and said sir this man is not allowing me to sit he says get up when i stand that man says don't stand here what shall i do i said go on moving <laughs> what is it i can say go on moving continue continue to move because he doesn't allow you to sit and stand so if he says why do you stand sir i am going no. when you sit why are you sitting i am going to stand there is no other way <laughs> therefore swami old people don't have strong muscles do you think they have no ego youngsters have strong muscles physical strength therefore their ego is stick understood but how about old people then bhagwan said muscle power is gone but their their hearts are still very harsh very rough very tough stone hearted fellows therefore they are still egoistic muscle power is dwindling muscle power is decreasing but their hearts are stony very harsh very rough therefore they are egoistic swami always has got the best answer we cannot corner him no impossible then swami what is it that we should have to be fearless what do you tell these youngsters to cultivate to be fearless baba said samata s a m a t h e equality to samagrata s a m e g r a t h e integrity samaikyata s a m e i k y a t e samaikyata unity saubhratrata s o w b h r a t h r a t h e saubhratrata fraternity when these four are there in you you will be fearless i repeat once again samata equality samagrata integrity samaikyata unity saubhratrata fraternity when you are these four you will be fearless now i move on to another episode that day happened to be thursday as you know in our college every thursday morning we have one full hour for a spiritual activity we'll have a guest speaker we'll have a panel discussion or spiritual quiz something like that swami asked that evening what do you have this morning there in the college we said swami we had one guest speaker who spoke on madhvacharya m a d h w a madhvacharya c h a r y a madhvacharya a great exponent a great philosopher who advocated the principle of dualism and that morning we had a talk and bhagwan started inquiring what did you understand from his talk 
tell few points boys could not answer we can say we are fantastic how it is please we'll meet tomorrow we are not ready with an answer when swami asked what are the points he could not immediately say that then he looked at me what do you say the well, i want to focus that so that to provoke swami to come forward with new dimensions on the same topic then i said swami this morning the learned scholar spoke on an aspect called witness witness or in sanskrit sakshi s a k s h i sakshi or witness he spoke on that swami could you please explain little more on that bhagwan said when he spoke why should i explain you go and talk to him you go and talk to him and then suddenly he said i have no witness please understand the depth and the profundity of this statement i have no witness it is really a profound statement may appear to be so simple no witness is the self in every one of us i think i am clear witness is the self meaning i know what is correct what is wrong i know what is happening i know what is happening in my dream that i which is beyond time and space that i which is beyond region religion caste community language gender age whatever may be that i is the eternal witness that i the witness is divine that i the witness is brahman is god so when baba said i have no witness what does it mean he is the witness there is no question of witness in him am i clear am i clear so there is nothing like witness in him because he is the witness am i clear that's why baba said i have no witness believe me i don't know about the reaction of other students and teachers being familiar with his literature and interested in spirituality and philosophy ah, it was like something like a electric shock to me yes i lost myself thinking of that eternal witness which is very well said in all these uh, scriptures then swami ah yes what go on swami the learned scholar this morning made references to certain examples mhm mm what are they i could not understand properly so in what context as he said with a reference to dualism qualified non dualism and non dualism he gave few examples i want swami to speak so that all will be benefited people have not come here to hear my talk i am fully aware of it i am highly conscious of it my job is only to extract more information make him speak then baba started speaking like that the three schools of philosophy dualism qualified non dualism and non dualism are three schools of philosophy which are complementary to each other 
they are not contradictory they are evolutionary and not revolutionary they are sequential one is the corollary to the other ah swami then he started giving examples a tender fruit unripe fruit and a ripe fruit ripe fruit of today was an unripe fruit few days back the unripe fruit much earlier was a tender fruit so same tender fruit develops ripe gets ripened into an unripe fruit and fully becomes a ripe fruit later same thing similarly dualism takes you to non qualified non dualism and then ends you up in non dualism so dualism qualified non dualism and non dualism are the three states of transition one leading to the other that's what bhagwan said swami said here is clay clay nature and the individual three clay pot and the individual three individual makes use of the pot made out of the clay similarly god is the potter nature is the clay so potter is god clay is nature the pot is the individual clear these are the three states of consciousness the three schools of philosophy such as dualism qualified non dualism and non dualism then swami pardon me for this question yes what is that question dualism says that god and man are separate am i clear god and man are different according to the theory of dualism dvaita then what is moksha or liberation that's my question my friends do not consider the question simple and silly our idea of moksha or liberation is to find oneness with god to find our identity with god that is moksha now dualism says god and man are different then what is moksha what is liberation baba said in my mind absence of attachment is moksha when there is no moha m o h e attachment that is moksha liberation moha kshaya moha attachment kshaya reduction is moksha am i clear that's what bhagwan said in a very simple way it's really very nice uh, uh, definition indeed and finally swami said you may say number of things but truth is one truth is one then being from a student from a christian college immediately i said swami in the bible it is said ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free is the biblical quotation how true it is and swami said the truth is one and next episode swami asked what did happen what did happen 
this morning in the college? What was the program this morning in the college? I said, Swami, we had students speaking on Christianity. Oh, I see. Good. What did they speak on Bible? What did they say about Ten Commandments? What did they say about Jesus Christ? He went on bombarding questions, one after one, one after one. The boys got up and said, in their own way, Swami, these are ten commandments. One, two, three, four. And one says, Swami Christ the Great. The one of love and sacrifice. Oh, good. Swami liked it. And finally said, look here. All that you said is based on your bookish knowledge. Bookish knowledge which is superficial knowledge. But what you should have said is, from your own heart, what you felt about it, your own vibration, your own inner voice, your own intuition, you have spoken basing on that, rather collected information from different books. Because bookish knowledge is only your scholarship. Scholarship is only an exhibition. Scholarship is an act of vanity. Don't do that. That's what Bhagwan said. So Swami, what shall we do now? Shall I stop reading? Swami said no. Speak based on your experience. Don't go merely by expression. Have experience as the foundation. And then expression will have some value. That's what Bhagwan said. And then Swami said, What else? What else? So that he can easily catch every fellow. <laughs> Where they went wrong. And they went on telling what all they spoke. And Swami also added to what, are, what all that has been said by students. And then, Swami said, Boys, you know Vedanta? V-E-D-A-N-T-H-E. -E, Vedanta. In English we say philosophy. But truly speaking, philosophy is just a translation, an apology for the word. But it does not convey the depth of the meaning of the word Vedanta. Vedanta is a Sanskrit word. Philosophy is an English word. Swami says, full loss, full loss, philosophy. Full loss, full of loss, fill that loss, so that it becomes philosophy. Oh, I see. Then what is Vedanta, Swami? Swami said this, Vedanta is the climax. Vedanta is the zenith. Vedanta is the ultimate. How? I don't know. Then Baba said, Here is milk. Boil it. Wait for some time. You can curdle it. Right? You get the curd next morning. Don't you? Now what do you do? Churn it. Churn it. You get butter. Don't you? Now heat that butter. You get the ghee. Then heat the ghee. It remains as the ghee. Because milk is the first state. Second curd state. Third butter state. Fourth ghee. Beyond that, no other state beyond it. So, Veda, milk, 
ಅಂತ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಘಿ ದ ಫಿನಾಲಿ ದಿ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ವಿ ಮೇಕ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಘಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಬಟರ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಟು ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ವಾಟ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಒನ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಪರಶುರಾಮ್ ಪರಶುರಾಮ್ ಓ ಐ ಸಿ ಹಿ ಲುಕ್ ಡೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಯು ನೋ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಶುರಾಮ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಈಸ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಫೆಲೋ ನಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೆಲೋ ಪರಶುರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಥಾಲಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಥಿಕ್ಸ್ ಓ ಐ ನೋ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಪರಶುರಾಮ್ also happens to be one of the 10 incarnations of vishnu the divine and parashuram killed all kshatriyas the warrior class killed everybody but two escaped who are they one is the father of rama dasharatha other is the father of sita janaka swami how could they escape when parashuram killed all kshatriyas the warrior class how could these two escape how could they escape swami said there is one discipline even in killing who oh, i say what is the discipline when anyone is found doing yajna he should not be killed and when one is getting married he should not be killed the sarada had three wives so he may be engaged in marrying second wife or third wife i don't know then parashuram was about to attack him he was getting married at that time so he was exempted oh very good when parashurama was about to kill janaka he was found doing some yajna so he was exempted that led to the birth of rama here sita there that led to celestial wedding sita rama that's what swami said and then swami started explaining story relating to parashurama the name of the father of parashurama is jamadagni j a m a d a g n i jamadagni the name of a saint the name of the mother of parashurama is renuka r e n u k a now one day jamadagni the father of parashuram was very angry with his wife renuka and called his son parashuram come here boy take this sword kill your mother parashuram immediately picked up the sword and killed his mother father was very happy because son immediately obeyed his command and father said my dear son i am pleased with your conduct now i am going to grant you a boon what is that you want i'll give you he said dear father bring back my life my mother to life bring back my mother to life immediately renuka was resurrected she was brought back to life now swami's comment you should know that when you fulfill the desire of god when you act according to the command of god you will get everything in life so parashurama following jamadagni got the good name for his obedience and got a, the best prestige a very big name remember till this day 
for having brought back his mother to life for her resurrection that's what swami said with thanks to bhagwan we'll meet again later thank you very much sai ram जी की थैंक यू